Today I'm going to be sharing with you how I make my living as an artist. One of my most asked questions is, am I a full-time artist or do I have another job? The YouTube videos that I make take up all my time. So there's no way I would have time to do this and have another job. So yes, I am a full-time artist. I have been for many years. Now I realize YouTube isn't going to be for everybody, but it was a huge step for me in making a living. I can't say what's going to work best for everyone, but I can give you guys my experience on what worked and didn't work so well for me. When I first started out as an artist, the internet was still a baby. Getting people to my really badly designed website was almost impossible. So sales were not happening there, but I was selling pretty well on eBay. Selling things for under $300, under $150 ideally, did better on eBay. So my more expensive, larger paintings, I didn't sell that way, but I did get a few sales each month from eBay, so that money helped. I have already made a video talking about my experience selling with eBay, so I'll put that link in the video description in an annotation somewhere here on the screen so I don't have to bore you guys with that story all over again, but if you do want to know more information about my experience there, definitely check that out. But for me, selling paintings online, whether it be eBay or Etsy or through my website, has never been enough to live on. In 1999, I started teaching my own painting and drawing classes out of Michaels. After many years of teaching at Michaels, it did take a long time to build up a student following. This was, at one point, my main source of income, but still not enough to live off of. A few years ago, I was teaching out of one of those paint while you drink wine classes. Now, those type of classes, if you can get scheduled to teach enough of them, you can make a living off of that. So this may be a good option for some people who are looking for an art type job. For me, it wasn't what I wanted to do, and it made it so that I didn't have time to do YouTube. So that was an idea. I ended up having to quit because the building I worked in had a serious mold problem and I got really, really sick. So that's why I ended up quitting. But while I did have offers from other businesses who wanted me to teach there, it wasn't for me the best choice. But that is going to be an option for a lot of you because those type of businesses are popping up all over the place. And that can be a good way to make a living working with art, even though it's not technically your own art. I also used to sell my work through a local art gallery in Southern California. And I did get a sale or two a month, but it was definitely not enough to live off of. In 2005, I started taking commissions for pet portraits. I started getting commissions because I had just gotten studio assistant number one at that point and I had done a few paintings with her and I shared them on some of the Italian Greyhound forums. People there saw the paintings I did of my own dog and wanted their dogs done. Then as Facebook started to get more popular than a lot of these forums, I was able to share my work in some of the Facebook Italian Greyhound groups and I got a lot of jobs that way. The thing with posting in the Facebook groups and on these forums, first you need to know the group or forum rules. Some do not allow you to promote your art or promote yourself in any way whatsoever. So be aware of that. The second is not to just be self-promoting. I wasn't telling people, hey, hire me to paint your dog. I was showing people, here's a painting of my Italian Greyhound that I painted. People would then send me personal messages asking how to get their pet painted. It wasn't a situation where I was pushing so hard that I came across very spammy. I was very involved in these groups at the time. I was constantly posting pictures of my own dogs, nothing to do with art. So everyone already knew who I was. So when I posted pictures of my dogs, they didn't just look at me as someone who was there just to sell to them. And and so that's why that worked. I did see where people came into both the groups and the forums and shared their work. And it didn't matter how good it was. If they were just sharing their work saying, hey, hire me to paint your pets, most people did not contact them because at that point, they're just an outsider who's spamming them. So that does make a big difference in sharing your work, but not forcing it down people's throat. But I did get a lot of commissions that way. And then word of mouth started bringing in more commissions. But for me, it was never enough to live off of on its own. A couple of years ago, I started offering prints for sale through Fine Art America. Usually I get a print or two selling every month, but definitely not enough to live off of. In 2011, I started making YouTube videos. By 2013, I had monetized those videos. Now, when you're monetizing the videos, there are reports out there that say how people are making hundreds of thousands of dollars on YouTube. That is so not the norm. There may be a couple of people that make that much, but most of us are not making very much money through the ads that play on YouTube. So if you are looking to use YouTube and make a career out of it, it's not usually going to work all on its own. I know of some YouTubers who will do brand deals and they get paid to do stuff like that. So you can get a little bit of extra money that way if that is a route that you want to take. Either way, monetizing your video through YouTube is not likely ever going to pay all your bills. And basically for years, I have been making these videos and making almost no money at all. Definitely one of those things. Do it if you love it, but don't do it thinking you're gonna get rich. For me, I love teaching and helping other artists, so it works for me. But are you noticing a trend here? Every single thing that I did, besides teaching at that drink and paint place, I was not able to make a living off any one 
one of these things. But when you add them all up, that's how I'm making my living. I have to do lots of little things all over the place in order to make ends meet as an artist. So if you are looking to make a living as an artist, you can absolutely do it. I recommend learn marketing. That is the biggest thing. Marketing and business is where we usually fail as artists. It's usually not from a lack of skill or technique or talent. We just have to learn to market ourselves better. But you can see I don't have all my eggs in one basket. There was a quote I heard a while back and it definitely applies to artists, but it was about entrepreneurs. It said something along the lines of entrepreneurs are the only people who will work 80 hours a week to avoid a 40 hour work week. And that is so true. I wanted to be an artist. I didn't want to work in an office, but I'm having to work a lot of hours to make the same amount of money that I would make working half the amount of time. And I don't say that to discourage anyone. I just want you guys to know if it is something that you want to do, plan on working extra, extra hard and don't expect it to happen right away. It took me over 10 years of pushing as a full-time artist to be able to make enough money that I could live off of. Luckily for me, because I was married, my husband was able to make up the money that I wasn't for those 10 years, but it was really rough. So if you are needing to support a family, don't quit your day job. Wait until you're making enough money with art before you do that. It can take a very long time to build the fan base that you need in order to make that living. Thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, social media tips for artists each Thursday, and artist vlogs every weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, Google+, Plus. all those social media sites. Links are below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys in a couple of days.